many things are up in the air, but one thing is certain. The World Martial Arts Tournament ends today on Dragon Ball. Hey guys, welcome back to another Iceberg video. This time I'm doing something different and talking about my other favorite franchise in the Dragon Ball Iceberg by Woodland Buckle on Twitter. Dragon Ball is the anime and manga series started in the 1980s where Goku and friends fight to protect the Earth and other planets and the universe too. I know you're just here for the iceberg though, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't so we can hit 10,000 by the end of the year, and most importantly, enjoy the video. Team 4 Star The first exposure that many fans had to Dragon Ball as a whole was the 2008 fan project Dragon Ball Z Abridged on YouTube. This project by Scott Frerichs, Nick Landis, and Curtis Arnett retold the events of Dragon Ball Z through a much more humorous and satirical lens, primarily making fun of the many tropes the show contained. The idea worked perfectly, and fans and critics loved the series, even having many believe it was even better than the source material. In spite of the long-running success, the project ended in 2020 due to both the brutal Toei animation copyright strikes and a loss of passion. Even with there being a lot of the series yet to be covered, Scott didn't want his magnum opus to fall into the same trap as shows kind of like The Simpsons. Jocko Manga This is the kind of entry that I don't want to say too much about, not just because you should check out the specifics for yourself, but this isn't a manga reading video, though that would be kind of fun. Jocko the Galactic Patrolman is a Dragon Ball spin-off released by Toriyama shortly after Battle of Gods and prior to the release of Dragon Ball Super. This manga takes place 10 years before the original Dragon Ball, and is actually numbered as Dragon Ball Minus Eleven. Our titular character is sent by the Galactic Patrol to stop an alleged Saiyan invasion on Earth. While his lack of ability does mean he doesn't complete the mission, he does go on a separate adventure with the Professor Imori and Tights, who is Bulma's sister. This adventure serves as a precedent to Jocko's many appearances in Dragon Ball Super, which started with the Resurrection F movie only a year after the conclusion of the manga. It's a really cute backstory to a relatively interesting character, and I would suggest anyone who can to check it out. The Ocean Dub While most English fans now know the English dubbing of Dragon Ball Media to be done by Funimation, this wasn't always the case. When Dragon Ball Z originally was coming to America, financial reasons meant that Funimation had to get support from Saban to contract Ocean Studios to do the English dub. Due to Saban's strict guidelines, the show was heavily censored, and only the first 67 episodes were dubbed. Possibly due to this, the show was cancelled in no time at all. Reruns on Cartoon Network, however, brought back a love for the series and the dubbing would continue. This time, however, Funimation couldn't afford Ocean Studios and they continued their English dub for the show on their own, leaving the rest of the Ocean dub to become exclusive to the UK and Canada, with the exception of the Ginyu Saga through the Trunk Saga, which they skipped entirely so they could catch up with Funimation. Dr. Slump before Dragon Ball, Toriyama got his career kicked off with the comedy manga series Dr. Slump. It follows the perfect android Arl Norimaki, a small, lavender-haired girl who attends a normal middle school. Her middle school is normal, but she is far from it, having super speed, super strength, and super intelligence. This leads her on many adventures ranging from slice-of-life ordeals to her destroying the moon with a single rock. After the conclusion of the manga, Toriyama moved on to create Dragon Ball. He didn't forget about his origins though, having characters from Dr. Slump appear in major and minor roles all the way through Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Super. It was even confirmed that at the point of the King Piccolo fight, Arl was noticeably stronger than Goku. It's over 9,000. It makes sense that this meme would be at the top of the iceberg, considering it has its own Wikipedia page. The meme comes primarily from the humorous delivery by Brian Drummond in the Ocean dub of the anime. The line was delivered in such a way so that it would fit the mouth movements of a Japanese-speaking Vegeta. This clip was posted to YouTube in 2006 and gained a level of fame that was unspeakable at the time and has ascended to a meme status that's essentially unquantifiable even for today's standards. If I did have to use a number though, you could probably guess what it would be over. Journey to the West for those uninitiated in Ming Dynasty publishing, Journey to the West, or simply Monkey, is a Chinese legend. It follows the legend of a Buddhist monk and his companions on a quest to find the religious texts called sutras. This already shows a great resemblance to Dragon Ball, but the main connection is found in Goku. 
One of the main characters in Journey to the West is Sun Wukong, or the Monkey King. In Japanese, however, this simian sovereign's name translates to Sun Goku. If that isn't enough to sway you, you'd be shocked to hear that the Power Pole and the Flying Nimbus both also come from Journey to the West. The other main characters from the original Dragon Ball have their equivalent too, even including the Ox King in his burning castle. Difference is, instead of being a demon who eats flesh, he's just kind of a quirky dad. His power is maximum. If you could be any superhero, who would you be? Stella of Winx Club? What about Danny Phantom? For Marcus Johnson from Fresno, California, he would want to be Broly from Dragon Ball Z. Why? Because his power is maximum. That's really all there is to the actual joke. The full image of the newspaper send-in was spread around the internet for a while in the early 2010s, but despite many articles trying to find where it all initiated, all I've been able to deduce is that it was no earlier than 2004 and no later than 2007. Regardless of when it started, the impact it's still making on fans today is... maximum. Dragon Ball Z Kai Censorship Dragon Ball Z Kai is the 20th anniversary HD remaster of the original series. The intention was to make it closer to the manga by cutting out all of the filler, and initially they cut out the Boo saga, but they fixed that eventually. Having come out in a post-9-11 world, this version of the story was more censored than most. Admittedly though, this is nothing new, as I've recently learned that there's no way to experience the true version of Dragon Ball if you don't speak or read Japanese, which I don't. The reason for Kai's heavier censorship was that it was to run on Nicktoons and the CW's animation block. These were both a lot more child-centered than the adult-oriented Toonami run, and so they found it best to remove all blood, some of the heavier violence, bad language, and even any mention of death. They also made Mr. Popo blue, which I won't comment on either way, I just wanted to make sure that you got the chance to see it. Yamamoto Plagiarism Delving deeper into Dragon Ball Z Kai, let's look at the composer, Kenji Yamamoto, and the fateful day of March 9, 2011. This is when Toei made a statement that a significant amount of Yamamoto's compositions that were used in the series, and some of the video games, infringed on third-party copyrights. This doesn't mean he was plagiarizing random small artists either. Some of the most notable victims were Pink Floyd, Black Sabbath, and Led Zeppelin. He was fired, and we don't know much about what he's up to nowadays. Let's finish this one off with my favorite example of his work from the game Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3. Speedy Big Green Dubs Dragon Ball has been translated to English probably more times than it's needed to be, and these two are not going to be the last ones we talk about, but they go together as they're exclusively dubs of the movies. First is the Speedy dub, which is also known as the Malaysian dub. This is renowned as probably the due to both the quality and the strange creative decisions taken, primarily name changes. Here are just a couple from the movie Bojack Unbound. Infinite Hands, Doran Gosso, Do, Goku. The Big Green dub, or the Toonami UK dub, also got its name from a mysterious renaming decision of calling Piccolo Big Green. One of the reasons that this one got popular, also aside from its low quality, were the names of the movies. They included the likes of Super Battle in the World, The Strongest Guy in the World, and Super Guy in the Galaxy. The cast of this dub has never been officially revealed, even having one of the movie's end credits display those from the Ocean dub. Budokai 2 Fusions Considering how many pieces of media there are that cover the story of Dragon Ball, they have to do a lot to keep things interesting. You can't just tell the same story over and over with no unique additions. This is part of why what-if scenarios have become so popular. One of the most popular types of what-ifs are hypothetical fusions. The idea of mixing two completely different characters was so funny that it even made its way into the main show, with the existence of Gokuel and Den Goku. Gokuel was even a playable character in Dragon Ball Budokai 2, along with another hypothetical fusion, Tien Sha, who is the fusion of Tien and Yamcha. Where Budokai 2 really shined, and I'm pretty sure this still counts as fusions, were Super Buu's new absorptions. Among his usual victims, he can absorb Vegeta getting his drip, Frieza and his weird purple things, Cell in his spots, and once again Tien and Yamcha together, gaining Tien's clothes and Yamcha's scars. Dragon Ball AF if you were a Dragon Ball fan in the early days of the internet, then there's a 110% chance that you saw this image. This is a Goku that has gone even further beyond Super Saiyan 4, possibly even to Super Saiyan 5. 
Considering GT had just ended, and this image was next to the title of Dragon Ball AF, fans knew that this just had to be the next thing Toriyama had doing. In reality, not only was it a piece of fan art for a fan manga named Dragon Ball AF, but the character isn't even Goku. This is Tablos, a character created by David Franco, who was unknowingly responsible for one of the biggest misconceptions in Dragon Ball history. The young Spanish artist was simply sharing his idea for a post-GT story that covered a future for Trunks where no Z fighters were left over. This idea, while the original intention, was shadowed by the hundreds of fan interpretations of the image, which pinned it as the next official piece of media. Funnily enough, this was a huge inspiration for Toyotaro, who made his own fan manga about Dragon Ball AF before officially becoming Toriyama's successor. Back Tingle much to the dismay of a large group of Dragon Ball fans, Dragon Ball Super introduced a new way in which Saiyans achieve the Super Saiyan status. If you ask many, they will say that this has single-handedly ruined the transformation as a whole. Instead of the usual emotional trigger that is required to push one even further beyond, the individual can focus their power in a way that creates a tingle in their back. In reality though, the only character who explicitly succeeds in this is Koflia. And in reality, the way in which this back tingle leads to becoming Super Saiyan is more so underdeveloped than it is something that outright ruins the concept. When I heard it, I figured that this feeling in the back is the way in which all Saiyans have been going Super Saiyan after they master the transformation, and they don't require the emotional aspect. Koflia is an exception and shouldn't ruin one's perspective of all of the content that came before it. Besides, you're biased if you can get past Trunks and Goten becoming Super Saiyan through sheer inheritance, but not Koflia, even though she was working on different universe rules. The show has always been silly and needed to push the limits to keep it fun. Plan to Eradicate the Saiyans In 1993, the Nintendo Famicom was the system to have, with the release of the game Planet to Eradicate the Saiyans. The game featured an entirely new story for the Z Fighters to play through. It went as follows. The planet Plant, which used to house the Tuffles, has its people massacred by the Saiyans, and is renamed to Planet Vegeta. One Tuffle, named Lychee, escapes, and vows to take revenge. To do this, they activate devices that emit Destron gas, that will kill everything on Earth. These machines are destroyed one by one by our heroes, leading to the final confrontation at the final emitter between the surviving Saiyans and Piccolo, and ghosts of past villains, Frieza, Cooler, Turles, and Lord Slug. The Saiyans win and use the Dragon Balls to fix all of the damages. In the second part, they chase down Lychee and find out that his secret weapon is called Hachiak and is powered by his hatred for the Saiyans. The Saiyans, and Piccolo, of course win this one too, and that concludes the story. This game was followed by an OVA of the same name that served as a walkthrough of sorts for the game. The OVA was re-scripted and re-edited for a 2010 release as a bonus feature to Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2. Not being part of the anime and involving movie villains makes it pretty clear this isn't exactly canon. Considering I was only 8 when Raging Blast 2 came out, I figured that Hachiak was a lot more important in Dragon Ball canon than it actually is. Could have just been wishful thinking though considering how cool he looks. Yamashi Even though the first Super Saiyan we see is Goku, that doesn't mean he was the first one ever. There's a reason that it was a call to legend after all. The legendary individual Frieza lived in fear of was actually a long past Saiyan named Yamashi, who could not only go Super Saiyan, but was the root of the Super Saiyan God legend. Thousands of years before the events of Dragon Ball Z, Yamashi began a rebellion against the evil Saiyans that goes quite poorly until he's cornered and taps into the power of a Super Saiyan. It isn't enough though, and he along with the rest of the righteous Saiyans are eradicated. His spirit, however, would then search for a new Saiyan to take his place as the hero. We don't know much about Yamashi, and all we do know we can account to a Namekian elder who sympathized with his cause and continued to tell his story through a book of legends. Heroes Dragon Ball Heroes is an arcade trading card game in Japan that is famous for the many what-if scenarios that it introduces. While the gameplay in theory is a lot of moving cards around, what makes it interesting is that the cards you play and move on the game board are scanned into the game in a fully animated action adventure with over 5 completely unique sagas. This game was Japan exclusive until a Switch port came out in 2018 across the world, and more famously a non-televised anime that retells the story of these aforementioned sagas. I haven't personally watched it beyond some really fun clips and seeing the characters in the other trading card game, but with crossovers like Jiren and Broly, I should probably tune in sometime. Blue Water Dub 
If you remember the Ocean dub mentioned earlier as the UK and Canada's main dub for Dragon Ball Z, then you won't be surprised to hear that for financial reasons, they chose to not do their Dragon Ball GT in-house, and instead pushed it on to Blue Water Studios, who actually managed to achieve quite a bit of appreciation for the job they did. This led to them also being hired to do a dub of the original Dragon Ball, which also achieved respectable success. I think this is it for Dragon Ball Z dubs, but I won't make any promises. S cells. Do y'all remember midichlorians from Star Wars? Me too. Anyways, unrelated to that, S cells in Dragon Ball are a type of cell found in the body of Saiyans that help them become Super Saiyan when reached with situations of immense emotional stress, or by focusing their power on the back tingle, but I don't want to get that argument started again. S cells are more likely to be found in kind hearted Saiyans, which is why after the evil Saiyans took over, it was essentially unheard of to see a Super Saiyan. Though they might have more S cells, pure hearted Saiyans aren't the only ones able to become Super Saiyan, as seen with Vegeta when he delivers this raw line. My heart is exceptionally pure. Pure evil to the core. Team 4 Star in Dragon Ball Z Kai. During the 25th World Martial Arts Tournament, a movie is shown to audience members that recaps the events of the Cell Saga, though with some particular leaning towards Mr. Satan as the hero. In Dragon Ball Z Kai's Funimation dub, members from Team 4 Star were brought on to record the lines for the less than stellar actors as a nod to the fans of their Dragon Ball Abridged series. This was even advertised by Toonami before they showed the episode. Once it came to it though, almost all the traces of the internet celebrities were gone, as per Toei's request. Almost, all because at the end of the movie, Team 4 Star's Krillin was able to make the cut with his call to action to buy Mr. Satan merch. False Super Saiyan The movie Dragon Ball Z Lord Slug takes place between Goku's coming to Namek and him becoming Super Saiyan for the first time. This didn't stop the creators from adding their own form of Super Saiyan to the movie though, during the final battle between Goku and Slug, Goku reaches a form that in many ways resembled a Super Saiyan, and is even called as such in the moment. This movie came out very shortly before the reveal of the real Super Saiyan though, so this form had to be pushed back to a sort of pseudo Super Saiyan state as to keep things consistent. The main manga and anime always took priority over side stories told in the movies. 16 is Jiro's son. Yes and no. Jiro had a son named Javo, who despite being powerful, ruthless, and daring in his lifetime, was killed by enemy gunfire. In a state of distress, Jiro built the entirely synthetic Android 16 in his likeness, and specifically made him to not be a fighter, as he couldn't risk losing him again. We did get to see Javo for the first time in the somewhat recently released, depending on when this comes out, movie Dragon Ball Super Super Hero. Ginyu's Original Body Captain Ginyu, one of my favorite characters, is famous for his ability to switch bodies with his opponent. This brings up the question on if his purple horned body is the one he's always had. In short, the answer is different depending on where you look, but also there's more evidence that he's always been purple. Not only is the form we see in Otherworld, but also in a side story we see where the first ever body he swapped with was this rich kid in his class, showing the form inside to be a child version of the same body we know and love. Don't worry though, he switched back when he learned money wasn't the way into a woman's heart. Unreleased OST There are a lot of soundtracks for Dragon Ball Z that you can go out and listen to, but there's also a shocking amount of music out there without an easy way to listen to it. Or at least that's what I would think of it if it weren't for Vitoko Art on YouTube, who has created high quality rips of many unreleased song in what they have aptly titled the Unreleased OST. There's a lot of really good stuff there, so I implore you to check it out. Neko Majin Z. Everyone knows about Goku's disciple Oob, but people tend to forget his other, even more debatably canon disciple, Neko Majin Z. This little blue cute cat guy is the protagonist of the Toriyama one-shot manga Neko Majin. Neko Majins are a race of cat people on Earth who have a small amount of magic power. The latter part of the manga is titled after Neko Majin Z, and even has more references to Dragon Ball Z beyond Goku showing off many other real Dragon Ball characters, along with Frieza's son Kurizo and a new Saiyan named Onio. Super cute stuff and you should really try and read it. Daizenshu Shortly after the end of the Dragon Ball manga, the equivalent of the Dragon Ball Encyclopedia was released. This was in the form of the Daizenshu, or Great Complete Collection. 
there were seven books released that covered everything from character biographies to interviews with the creator. This was an awesome place to learn more about your favorite characters and see some artwork you wouldn't have the chance to see otherwise. If you wanted to see it in English, you'll only have the chance to pick up the first book, as it was the only one translated. Though, considering a lot of what people wanted was the artwork, you could probably get away with picking up the whole set. Faulkner Lawsuit Bruce Faulkner was famous for his work on the Funimation dub of Dragon Ball Z, we already know this. But, there is a reason that all releases nowadays don't use his work, and getting a collection with it can cost a pretty penny. When Funimation began work on the GT dub, they decided to not work with Faulkner again, leading to a long dispute that also had Faulkner encourage fans to harass Funimation and their employees. Also, it has come to light that Faulkner actually had many ghostwriters working under him who did the bulk of the work for less credit. 17 and 18 names. Though even after they became good guys, Android 17 and 18 used their numbers as their names, it doesn't mean that they didn't have normal human names before the events of the story. The twins, 17 and 18, were named Lapis and Lazuli respectively. This wasn't confirmed in the actual story, but it was said by Toriyama in a Q&A portion, so that's good enough for me. Missing Scenes in the Dragon Ball Super Special In the latter half of Dragon Ball Super, there is a scene during the fight between Jiren and Goku, depicting the Grand Priest protecting Zeno. This scene was left in during the special and can be found on Funimation, but was cut when the special was split into two episodes for Crunchyroll. Some people believe the scene was taken out for the sake of making Jiren appear stronger, as the scene depicts somewhat of a struggle, but others believe it could have just been a weird time constraint thing when splitting the episodes up. This isn't some lost media thing, just an interesting choice by the distributors. Bang Zoom I said I was done with Dragon Ball Z dubs, but not Dragon Ball Super dubs, so let's talk about Bang Zoom. This was the English dub used for Toonami Asia. Creating a new English dub this late into the game is hard, as the Funimation voice actors have become synonymous with the characters. This led to the iffy reception of the dub and the eventual cancellation. This mixed reception was even brought into the sphere of the Funimation voice actors, having voice actors like Chris Rager express a distaste for the dub, and Kara Edwards showing support of her counterpart. Kaiser Neko in ROF Team 4-star co-founder Kaiser Neko managed to bring Team 4-star voice talent back to an official dub during the release of Dragon Ball Z movie Resurrection F. He played one of Frieza's soldiers, which while a small part all things considered, is another huge nod to Dragon Ball fans to have one of their own on the big screen alongside so many huge names. Super Saiyan Power this is a vague entry title, so I'm gonna assume that this is a reference to the partial Super Saiyan form that Goku, and others to a lesser extent, has achieved multiple times throughout the series. You can tell a character is in this form when their hair takes on the shape of a Super Saiyan while maintaining its original color. We see this when Goku fights the Ginyu Force during a rematch in Hell, and in the ever-so-famous scene where he assists Gohan with the father-son Kamehameha. This is a super cool form, and is actually getting some love in one of the most recent Dragon Ball Super card game expansions. Dragon Ball Online In the year 2010, Japan and South Korea were blessed with an MMO with the power to match that of RuneScape and World of Warcraft. Okay, so maybe not that big, but I sure thought it was gonna be as a kid. Dragon Ball Online takes place approximately 200 years after the events of Dragon Ball Z, and covers the story of a new generation of fighters fighting against a brand new evil, Mira, who is also the villain in both Xenoverse games. Actually, many aspects of the plot and characters were used in the Xenoverse games, which is a pretty cool way to expand upon what was kind of a crazy and not worldwide experiment from a couple years prior. What made this game so cool to a kid like me was the power to make my own Dragon Ball character, and the fact I could talk to Goku. Now this was a bit of a white whale for me, as a rural East Coast American kid who didn't have access to Korean or Japanese services. But a group of dedicated fans have now created a private server called Dragon Ball Online Global, so now anyone anywhere can play the game, in a fashion akin to Toontown rewritten. July 2019 Dragon Ball Super Returning July 2019? This was a YouTube title, news headline, or just generally typed phrase you would see almost every day around March of 2019. This rumor was brought into the limelight by Geekdom101, who claimed that the anime would be back later that year, with not only a new set of weekly episodes, but higher quality animation. I trust in him that the sources he had shared this information, but I'll also say that we are here in the wonderful year of 2022, and mamma mia, we have not gotten any new show content. We did get Superhero though, and I'm content with that. Toriko Crossover 
For the uninitiated, Toriko is a manga series about a guy named Toriko, who, by using his strength and knowledge, hunts the most exotic and delicious foods in the gourmet world. Sometimes this leads him and his friends to fight evil for the sake of preserving the planet. Also, if you are uninitiated on One Piece, how in the world are you uninitiated on One Piece? Regardless, in the year 2013, there was an episode of One Piece that had the characters, along with Toriko and Dragon Ball characters, fighting in a tournament in which the winner received the best tasting meat in the world. Through a turn of events, Mr. Satan wins the meat, but is then energy sapped, along with every other side character, by a giant monster that it then takes the protagonists from every respective show to beat. Budokai 3 Easter Egg there are a couple little easter eggs throughout Budokai 3, so I'm not sure which this iceberg creator wanted to reference specifically, so I'll just share my favorite. Cybermen's self-destruct move is only a one-hit KO on Yamcha, as a reference to the fact he's the only character to be shown dying to a Cyberman. Dragon Ball Ford Commercial So actually, there are two Dragon Ball Ford commercials. First off is my favorite, featuring Krillin and Gohan wishing of Purunga to give them three cars with varying features as Purunga proclaims that they can get all of these wonderful features in the brand new Ford Focus. Second is Goten and Trunks using the fusion dance, but instead of leading into Gotenks, the two turn into a Ford fusion? Dragon Ball Z VHS subs. In the late 80s and early 90s, one of the most accessible ways to watch anime for the average fan would be to buy VHS tapes. Many anime, however, didn't have official dubs or subs, so what was someone able to do if they wanted to try and watch it? This is where fan subs come in. Just as the name would imply, these are anime shows and movies that have subtitles written by fans instead of big companies. This lack of professionalism sometimes led to iffy results, and in Dragon Ball Z's case, led it to some sort of turf war. The creators didn't intend for these to be sold for a ton of money, but a lot of shop owners had a different idea. There's some real anger in some of these, like the one saying, Don't you think Hank whines and complains just a little too much, especially for someone making money off our tapes? And this one. I really hate that James's sister is catching strays like this. Vegerot. When Goku and Vegeta use the Botara earrings, who do they turn into? Vegito? Yes, but if you're reading the English Viz media release of the manga, you'll notice their name is Vegerot. This might make some more sense if you're an English fan of the series, as it's a fusion of Vegeta and Kakarot. In Japanese, however, Goku's Saiyan name is Kakarotto, and this toe sound is where we get the Vegito. This name was kept in the Funimation dub of the show, but is one of the many naming differences you'll notice by reading the English manga. Bulma in Budokai 3 If you've 100 percented the Japanese version of Dragon Ball Budokai 3, and have an action replay lying around, then you can unlock a very special costume. Videl's secret third costume replaces her with Bulma. Some people wonder, however, if this is just a model swap cheat and not actually an intended feature. Firstly, all of her dialogue is Videl's, but in the Collector's Edition bonus disc for the English version of the game, there was an interview with voice actor Tiffany Vollmer that also included her using some particularly battle-sounding noises. This, along with the voice lines found in the files announcing her as a fighter, makes people believe that she was originally intended to be her own playable character. Harmony Gold If you wanted to watch a less censored version of the first five episodes of the original Dragon Ball, then the Harmony Gold dub is the, probably the best for you. This isn't really giving it the credit it deserves, as the Harmony Gold dub was actually the first ever English dub of Dragon Ball. It never got much of a viewer base, leading it to being cancelled after the first five episodes, but they also did the first and third movies. Maybe it would have done somewhat better had they not changed almost every single name, like Goku now being Zero and Puar being... Squeaker? Villains inspired by editors. The only confirmed case of this I can find is Toriyama saying that Majin Buu is based on his editor, though he would go on later to say that he wouldn't claim whether or not that was intentional. When it comes to the inspiration to create new villains at all, however, it's been said that they were the driving force to replace Androids 19 and 20 with 17 and 18, and to create Cell and his transformations. At that point, I could kind of see why the Majin Buu thing would happen. Final Bout Voice Cast This is Dragon Ball GT Final Bout, famous as a very... Dragon Ball game. The game had some interesting choices made, such as that of having Pan as the only exclusively GT character to be playable, but beggars can't be choosers, as this was the first ever Dragon Ball game to come to the US. This also probably gives an idea as to why none of the actual voice actors for the characters at the time reprised their role in the game. 
and really none of the voice actors used were credited in the game at all. Over time we've been able to figure out who most of them were, which is super cool, but doesn't make up for the fact that more than a third of the playable characters are Goku. Toriyama's Cat Toriyama is a cat guy through and through, and this can be seen in a couple of his character designs. It's been said that his sleeping cat was the inspiration for Korin, and that's why they always have their eyes closed. In the same interview that he confirms the Korin rumor, he also confirms that a cat he had later down the line, as pictured here, was the inspiration for the god of destruction Beerus. This cat was said by the vet to have a very short time left to live, and miraculously healed himself through sheer willpower, exactly the kind of thing you'd expect from the god of destruction. Frieza and Xenomorphs There's a lot of design similarities between Frieza's third form and the Xenomorphs from the movie Alien. There's no real confirmation that these two things are linked, but Toriyama said in an early Shonen Jump issue that Alien is his favorite movie, and he's taken inspiration from it before, so maybe this theory isn't all that far-fetched. Dragon Ball Z Kai Ocean Dub I don't know if I'm strong enough to talk about another dub. At least this one is kind of interesting, as it's actually a piece of lost media. Just like how there was an ocean dub for Dragon Ball Z and GT in Canada and the UK, it seems as there was intended to be one for Kai too. There was nothing released, or even anything announced, but there have been a plethora of workers and voice actors referencing work done for the series. Even Funimation's own Sean Schemmel commented on the existence of the ocean dub, but also his words about it weren't too optimistic. Lost Specials now it's really getting to be the good stuff. Back in 1992, there was a 45-minute special release in Japan called the Movie Overview Special. This came out alongside Dragon Ball Z Super Android 13 and had Goku and Gohan in their nice white suits, reviewing all Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z movies up to that point. The entire 45-minute video was lost and then found on a Polish form in 2014, though I still can't get it because the link is down. I do have a 10 minute, really poor quality, unsubbed clip, which in spite of its quality is insanely cool. The second Lost special is the Looking Back at It All special from 1993. It is somewhat similar, simply being a review of the past year of Dragon Ball Z news. This time it also featured Goten and Chi Chi. This one ends with a subtle advertisement for the series, with Goku talking about Pecan in the Other World Tournament, and Gohan saying the adult division of the World Tournament was going to begin next year. All that I can find about this one is a 5 minute clip in an unimaginably low quality, with less than 2000 views. It is subbed though, and it's very cute. You can also find a lot of people's Dragon Ball playlists named after the special, probably just to bait in unsuspecting fans. Bobbity is a clone of Bibbity. Bibbity is the evil villain who originally dealt with the likes of Majin Buu, and Bobbity is his offspring who would continue this work down the line. As for this theory, it is very true. Bibbidi, similar to Tien, can split into multiple versions of himself, each with a smaller amount of power. This was how Bobbidi was created, as opposed to this guy... procreating? However, when Bibbidi died, Bobbidi became the main form again, becoming just as strong as his dad, I mean his... spawn point? Kaioken is inspired by Super Saiyan God. Kaioken, as introduced in the Saiyan Saga, gives the user a power multiplier and a red tint. Super Saiyan God gives the user a power multiplier and a red tint, but also red hair and red eyes. Both were developed by the gods, but only one actually gets you in touch with God Key, which is evident by the fact that it can't be sensed by mortals. They're similar in concept, so it could be possible that Kaioken is like a baby form of Super Saiyan God. Like, check this out, even Krillin can use Kaioken. It's also interesting how the two moves are used in tandem, when Goku fights Zamasu in his Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken form. Hit's Clone Apparently many people believe that the Hit that lost to Jiren was actually one of his phantoms or clones, and that Hit was just waiting to come out of the time dimension to attack. Some people are a lot less receptive to this theory, both calling it a joke and dismissing it even as that. Does seem like a good plot for one of those two hour Dragon Ball What If videos you see on YouTube though. El Manga Legendario more than 17 years ago, there was a series of Dragon Ball figures released in Spain, accompanied with magazines titled El Manga Legendario. These are some cute games to play like this matching game and even interviews with Toriyama. They also did interviews with the people who created the figures, which gave some cool insight on a process not a lot of people think about. Not everything was perfect though, as there were some things claimed in this manga that were somewhat... bold, like Gotenks being able to beat Kid Buu. 
Regardless, these are some super cool little books, and there are some quality translations for them online. 4x3 Movies Like a lot of old animated content, Dragon Ball Z and its movies were originally animated in 4x3. When they were taken to theaters though, they were changed into 16x9 to fit on the wide screens. A lot of people greatly prefer the original aspect ratio, which makes sense, but these are a lot harder to get your hands on nowadays. I personally don't mind either way, I even just recently started collecting the movies in the new multi-pack releases. Please don't inform any purists. Fire Safety PSA In the wonderful year of 1988, Dragon Ball was used for a couple of PSAs. PSAs are public service announcements and are generally used to teach children important life lessons. There was a traffic safety PSA, and more interestingly, a fire safety PSA, titled Goku's Fire Brigade. In the PSA, two kids are accidentally starting a fire, and a kid Goku is able to put it out before it becomes a problem. He then scolds them for their poor decision making, and a real fire starts. Goku, along with his friends, in their little firefighter outfits, are able to put it out. Then the kids show that they've learned their lesson, and we get another cool firefighter scene. It's 10 minutes long, and has a translation on YouTube, so if you want more than my quick summary, check it out, because it's a super cute piece of Dragon Ball media. Toyotaro Plagiarism Four years ago, there was a controversy around current head of Dragon Ball Super, Toyotaro, having traced artwork of Captain America for his Goku on a V-Jump cover. This created a huge drama in the community, as a lot of fans were already skeptical of the relatively new head of Dragon Ball. This led to people calling for him to be fired, and calling back on him being a fan artist originally as being the issue. He had been ridiculed before for either reusing poses from his work, or reusing poses from earlier in the Dragon Ball series, but stuff like that is relatively trivial, and muddies the water in what could be a very serious discussion. Broadcast Audio So I discovered sticklers about aspect ratios, and now we get to talk about audio sticklers. Broadcast audio is exactly what it sounds like, the audio that played during original broadcast. This audio is generally better than what is used in home releases. Don't ask me why, really, I'm not an audio expert. What I was able to collect, though, is that Toei is famous for not really caring about the audio quality, which has led to years of people yearning for a better way to listen to their favorite show. Boo represents the US This is a really interesting theory that in reality doesn't have too much basis. Majin Buu is overweight, greedy, and loud, which are all stereotypes that people have of Americans. He fought back against his creator like the Revolutionary War, fought against the evil version of himself like the Civil War, and he even levels entire cities with his destructive power, which has been the American way for almost over 80 years now. If Buu is the US though, then that makes the Z Fighters like the Axis powers or something, and I don't know, I don't like that idea. VR vs Game in 1994, the world was blessed by the Sega System 32 arcade game, Dragon Ball Z Virtual Reality Versus. If you expected real virtual reality, you would be mistaken, but it's still kinda cool. It is fully 2D, but it has a punch-out light camera angle that makes you feel like you're in the fights. After fighting all of the Z fighters, you are met with the original character final boss, Majin Ozato, who I think has a pretty sick design. Once you beat him, you are welcomed by a different ending screen depending on which character you play. Most of them are really cute and fun, but the fact that Future Trunks wishes for Vegeta back in his timeline is really sad. Society Survival Saga The Society Survival Saga is a parody of the critically acclaimed Universe Survival Saga, where instead of fighting in a multiversal bloodbath, the Z Fighters have to survive a 9 to 5. This was an April Fool's joke from Toei Animation, and was a short series involving three audio-only episodes. Personally, I love the poster and all of the business outfits the characters are given, and it's even cooler they were added to Dragon Ball Heroes, all getting their own cards. Makayoshins Makayoshin is basically Japanese for Demon Supreme Kai, which is a race introduced in one of the many Dragon Ball fun fact books like I've already mentioned. While there isn't any canonical examples, many people point to Demigra, the main villain from Xenoverse and a frequent villain in Dragon Ball Heroes. He wears Potara earrings and has his eyes set on becoming the Supreme Kai of Time, which can probably only be taken by another Supreme Kai? I don't know that one, but I do like the idea of introducing a counterpart to the Supreme Kai that we already know. Jiren is the Buddha before we get into it, I have to point out that the Reddit post that started this is titled, Jiren is the Buddha, not a troll post, I'm deadly serious. 
Essentially, Jiren's demeanor and his strength resemble something one can only reach after becoming enlightened. Even the way that he meditates resembles Buddha. The post claims that Jiren, by reaching this enlightenment, has put him past a god. Going back to Journey of the West from the top of this iceberg, it was the hand of Buddha that was able to beat Sun Wukong, in spite of all of his strength. Also, bald. Android 19 and 20 Retcon in Chapter 342 of Dragon Ball Z, Goku begins to lose his fight against Android 19, and when Piccolo tries to get in the way, he is swiftly defeated by Dr. Jiro, or Android 20. The chapter ends with Piccolo lying lifeless on the ground as Vegeta enters the fight. Then in the next chapter, Piccolo gets up and says he was faking it. Between these two chapters, the events I mentioned earlier, where Toriyama's editor told him to change the villain took place. They had to nerf Androids 19 and 20 between these two chapters and in the chapters that followed. Vegeta destroyed 19 and Trunks claimed that these weren't the Androids he knew, and this is what led to the reveal of 17 and 18. 21 is Jiro's wife. Yes. Kind of. Just like Android 16, Android 21 is simply a robot based on Dr. Jiro's wife, Vomi. This was confirmed for us in the same family tree seen in Dragon Ball Super Superhero. So, while 21 is based on Jiro's wife, we can't say that she is his wife, as canonically, Android 21 is only 10 years old, as opposed to her human adult counterpart. Dragon Power Dragon Power is the first Bandai-published Dragon Ball game, coming out in 1988 for the NES in North America. The problem with its North American release, as opposed to its Japanese and European releases, is that it wasn't really a Dragon Ball game anymore. Goku gets changed into a generic kung fu fighter, and Master Roshi is changed to the traditional master. Also, just about every character, attack, and item had its name changed too. Say hello to Nora. Toriyama helping Bleach Many fans of both Bleach and Dragon Ball believe that after Bleach was denied by Shonen Jump, Kuba was going to quit until receiving a letter from Toriyama saying to keep going. Or was it that Bleach was going to get cancelled and Toriyama wrote in favor of keeping it up? The reason I don't know the story for sure is because a lot of people don't, as it seems to be an urban legend. Even if it's on Wikipedia, the citation they use doesn't have any actual saying from Kubo or Toriyama because there simply isn't any out there. Dragon Ball was an inspiration for a metric ton of manga creators, but when it comes to Toriyama himself helping Bleach directly, doesn't seem so. Pure Golden Frieza we saw what happened when Frieza trained for only a few months, but what would happen if he actually took some time to slow down and really grind things out? Oh wait, no not that. I mean, yes, that, but that's not relevant to this topic. We can learn what would happen by looking at this merchandise exclusive transformation known as Pure Gold Frieza. He trained so much that he's gone beyond appearing gold in color and is now made of solid gold through and through. Goku and Anne Frank as many people did with pieces of media that they enjoyed, some fans of the Diary of Anne Frank decided to create some stories of their own. In response to this, there was a creator who wrote a parody fanfiction that happened to pair Anne Frank with a certain anime protagonist. For the sake of getting through this topic, I'm going to ignore that Goku is like 40 and Anne Frank was barely a teenager when she wrote her diary. There are two parts to this story if you are really interested in reading it. Not that I would entirely advise it, as it's certainly a product of its time, both in humor, writing, and what was generally acceptable. Also, if you can't tell, there is indeed a 15-minute animation that was posted to YouTube. It's not my thing, though I will admit Goku as an ultra superpower Saiyan, beating up Hitler is almost as cool as when Trunks and Goten fought Hitler in the real series. El Hermano Listen, we all know Jiren, and we think he's cool. His reason for both being a loner and training as hard as he has is because of a mysterious villain that killed his parents, his friends, and even his master. What if I told you, though, that this villain was actually his brother, El Hermano, who then left to travel through timelines and multiverses to find the strongest fighter out there? This, of course, isn't canon, yet, but is part of the Dragon Ball Next Future fan story. Luckily, his infinite Omni-King surpassing power was defeated by Gohan Blanco and... Is that Shaggy? Did I mean to write that? Original Janimba and Wheelo Designs There's a decent chance that every character you have seen in Dragon Ball changed in some way from their original conception. One of these was Janimba, who instead of his purple and red was supposed to don a much creepier blue and gray. 
As for Dr. Wheelow, the changes were less intense, mostly some smaller changes to the robot design, and his actual human body looking a lot more old than its Dragon Ball Heroes counterpart. End of GT. I couldn't find any weird or mysterious theories, so I guess this is just actually referencing the end of Dragon Ball GT? I guess I'll recap it for you here. After defeating Omega Shenron, the real Shenron comes back and asks Goku to come with him, and he does after making Shenron agree to bring back everyone who died in the recent two sagas. He then says his goodbyes, fighting with Krillin one more time, seeing Piccolo in hell, and giving his gi to Pan to cherish forever. He then falls asleep on Shenron's back as the four star ball fades into his heart. We then see him a hundred years later, watching a fight between Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr. We see a montage of notable moments in Goku's life before he looks at the audience and says, Till we meet again guys, and the anime trilogy ends. Gohan Age Change I found a reddit post complaining about an age change in Kai, but their math was wrong, so I don't know if that's what this is talking about. Listen, I hate to be that guy who isn't giving you the best information possible, but there's so many numbers involved with this topic, so I'm going to do my best to power through them. At the beginning of Z, Gohan is 4 years old. When he fights the Saiyan and goes to Namek, he is 5, meaning he is 6 when Future Trunks comes around. After that, there is a 3 year time skip to train, and at 9 years old, he enters the time chamber. And this is where it gets weird. Biologically, his body is 10, but he himself is 9 in the real world, as it's only been like a day. For sake of ease, we will say he is 9 when he dominates Cell. That means in the 7 years that Goku was gone, he would have grown to be 16 the exact age that the manga claims at the beginning of the Boo Saga. You have to trust me on this one, I took a stats class like two years ago. 4D Movies This is a cool one. There have been two 4D attractions for Dragon Ball found at Universal Studios Japan. The first is Dragon Ball Z, the real 4D, which has a mysterious figure wish for Frieza to come back and he fights Goku. He is still strong enough to beat base Goku, and now Frieza is strong enough to beat a now Super Saiyan Goku and Vegeta, along with Piccolo and Krillin. It is until a giant spirit bomb is thrown at Frieza that he is defeated and the heroes begin to repair the city. It's only 11 minute long, so the pacing isn't its strong suit. One year later, we had Dragon Ball Z, the real 4D at Super Tenkaichi Budokai, an even more ambitious project. In this attraction, we watch as the Battle Royale Budokai Tenkaichi is taking place, with our finalists Vegeta, Goku, Piccolo, Krillin, and the Great Saiyaman. Shenanigans ensue until God Broly comes down and wreaks havoc. It takes Goku performing God Fusion with the audience to have enough power to easily destroy Broly. I love amusement parks and attractions like this are exactly why. Beat is Goku's descendant. As a reminder, Beat is the playable Saiyan protagonist of Dragon Ball Heroes. It is confirmed in the Switch game, Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission, that he is indeed a descendant of Goku, though it's uncertain if it's from Goten or Gohan. This help explains why he's so naturally able to turn Super Saiyan. While this is cool, I also learned that temporarily, Ginyu was technically part of the Sun family. The more you know. GT Film Special Lost Many don't know that while there isn't any theatrical movies for Dragon Ball GT, there was a TV special. This special follows Goku Jr., learning to be in touch with his heritage and be a brave fighter, despite his naturally timid nature. He seeks out the four-star ball from his great-great-grandfather's home on Mount Paozo to heal Pan and revive his friend. Though he doesn't actually understand how the Dragon Balls work, it seems like Goku was able to make his wish come true just in admiration for the bravery he had shown. The film itself isn't lost, but seemingly the original master. The re-release of the films are unrestored, despite the fact the audio has survived and is crystal clear. Toriyama Plagiarism I can only assume, even with my research, that this is in reference to Superman. His origin story is very similar to Goku, both having been sent to Earth from a planet destined for destruction to later go on to be its protector. Or it can be in reference to self-plagiarism, as he's reused poses and stuff from earlier works, but it's not like it's a college essay, so I don't really see where that would be going. Also, the quotation marks on this topic's title feel very accusatory. I feel like there's something I don't know and just can't figure out. If you know more than I do, please sound off in the comments. Korean Dragon Ball Movies If you had thought Dragon Ball Evolutions was the only live-action Dragon Ball movie, you would be sorely mistaken. And honestly, by what I've seen here, it might actually be the least cool one. This is Dragon Ball, Son Goku fights, Son Goku wins. This is essentially a retelling of the beginning of the original Dragon Ball, this time with real actors. 
Despite its seemingly low budget and debatable quality because of it, I love every single clip I've seen and will certainly be doing a full watch through very soon. My two favorite parts are Puar the Puppet and the use of Saiyan armor from Dragon Ball Z in what is a retelling of the original series. Laser Discs Laser discs are like the vinyl of movies. They're discs, but they're huge, expensive, and generally just less convenient. But they were known for having a higher quality than their competitors out at the time. Resolution-wise, DVD is the way to go, but if you're an audio guy, it's cool that the Dragon Ball Z laser discs came with an extra audio channel for the isolated score. And you can get your favorite Dragon Ball Z movie on a once again, absolutely huge disc. Uncredited animators. Throughout Dragon Ball's long history, there have been an unimaginable number of animators who haven't been credited for their work, whether this be from them never getting credit, or them just not being credited for a specific episode. Regardless, the keenest of fans can usually pick out which animators do which shots, so even if the credits don't have their back, the fans will always be there for them. Sheeta Cutting Frieza Speaking of specific and often uncredited animators, Naotoshi Shida is one of the most famous. Even though their work has spanned many, many years, a lot of fans' favorite scene is the fight between Frieza and Goku in the Universe Survival Saga. This not only led to this amazing punch between Goku and Frieza, but also this creepy smile that perfectly encapsulates Frieza's ickiness. GT Live Show Despite us having the full video available, I still can't wrap my head around this piece of media. In the year 1997, January 3rd to be exact, an unassuming ice rink in Japan would be the venue for an absolutely crazy live show based on Dragon Ball GT. The show begins with the Z Fighters facing off with Don Ki, a villain from GT, before they're met with the return of both Frieza and Cell in new, stronger forms. Of course, friendship prevails, but what is more interesting are these new outfits. Cell looks very similar, but Frieza doesn't even retain a single color from his original design, and is wearing way more clothes than we're used to. German OST A lot of people know and love the English dub soundtrack, and that makes it so that many frequently overlook the quality of the German OST. Not only is their rendition of Cha La Head Cha La a ton of fun, but the song played at the World Budokai Tenkaichi in the original Dragon Ball sounds like the kind of thing you would hear at a rave. If you don't think that could be true, just listen to the music in the background right now. Aika, the Legendary Super Saiyan Before the reveal of the Universe 6 Saiyans, fans always wondered why there were no female Super Saiyans. Or at least that's what fake fans thought, as they didn't know about the Lost TV special, The Legendary Power. The Z Fighters have to fight a female Super Saiyan, Aika. She not only approaches them while they're at Kami House like Raditz did, but she also reveals that she's related to Goku. Her outfit even looks like Raditz's, except it's a lot more... uh... You can tell she's evil because her key is red and black. And don't worry, as she begins to lose the fight, her armor does begin to fall off. She then becomes a legendary Super Saiyan, and requires Goku to collect energy from his friends to win. Just like Broly, except when she gets punched, she gets back up. Then she gets hurled into the sun and explodes. I skipped a bit, but the summary is not as important as the fact that this very humorous fan story has managed to fool a ton of younger audiences, despite being full of so many things that make it almost creepily fanfiction-y. Vegeta's yeah, so it's do not research. Well, you guys heard the topic, I guess let's wrap this up. I'm just kidding. This is a video showing Vegeta walking in the rain after Goku left with Shenron in the end of Dragon Ball GT. All the while, there's a montage of their moments together playing in the background. He then declares that he will control when he dies, and shoots himself in the chest with a key blast. This is the end of the video, but not the end of the lore. It turns out that this is part of a fan manga, called Dragon Ball GS PGV's Dragon Ball AF. You see, Vegeta died here, and was supposed to be brought back by the Dragon Balls hundreds of years later, but part of his soul escaped and wandered hell for all that time. So, when he's brought back to life, it's actually his dark side, forming a new character known as Dark Angel Vegeta. If you are as lost as I currently am, do not fret, as further details will be revealed in the series. Final Bout Motion Controls Final Bout didn't have motion controls. Well guys, that is it. We have made it through 38 years of Dragon Ball history in what feels like no time at all. Dragon Ball is such an important part of my life, and I felt like a kid again reading through so much muck. 
I hope that if you're a fan like I am, it was a wonderful trip down memory lane. And if you aren't a Dragon Ball fan and managed to make it to the end, I hope you consider trying it out now. And subscribing if you might want to see more Dragon Ball stuff in the future. Or Pokemon stuff, because I can guarantee you'll see that. Either way, your support will help us get to 10,000 by the end of the year. Now go watch Dragon Ball Z if you haven't. Or, you know, in your own time. Until that day comes, however, this is your reminder to like, comment, and subscribe. It's free, so you'll always get your money's worth.